I was in a meeting, a prayer meeting recently, and somebody had a picture of a uh, dandelion seed. And, and as the wind blew, of course, we know the picture well, the seeds spread and went to all sorts of different places. And they felt that this was something God was saying to the church about this season that we're in that uh, there was uh, an opportunity for what was the ball of seed to scatter uh, and spread and, uh, and germinate and grow in all sorts of different places. And it reminded me of the early church, those early believers who were centred in Jerusalem. And uh, the Spirit had come and, and thousands of people had become Christians and uh, the sick were being healed and even... Uh, Peter's shadow um, uh, you know people would bring the sick and lay them on the on the side of the streets on the on the hope that Peter's shadow would heal them and it was a, it was a fantastic time and then Stephen was killed and they were scattered and uh, nobody would have strategized for that or planned for that or even desired that it was an ugly thing it was a it was an unpleasant thing that happened but actually the fruit of it was significant and we can read in Acts 8 uh, verse uh, 4 uh, it says those who'd been scattered preached the word wherever they went Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Christ there the crowds heard Philip and saw the miraculous signs he did they all paid close attention to what he said with shrieks, evil spirits came out of many, and many paralytics and cripples were healed. So there was great joy in that city. And uh, it's, a, it's a passage that I've read lots, and particularly the last bit where it says there was great joy in the city. Uh, it's been something I've desired for many years to see that. And uh, so I feel like this is something that that God is doing amongst us. None of us would have planned or desired or, or, or even are happy that COVID-19 has hit our planet. It's, a, it's an ugly situation. It's one that none of us are happy with. Nevertheless, we're having to um, revisit some of our ways of doing things. And so it's, it may be a while before we can gather as a big group and uh, it seems that that's that picture of the um of the dandelion seed is sort of that's sort of where we're at we're all in different places and the 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 coronavirus has sort of blown on those large gatherings and now we find ourselves in smaller gatherings um or even isolated on our own seeking to still be christ-like and to still bring glory to god and uh, and uh, and so that's what i want to talk about and I think I think if you were to narrow down the purposes of God into one this is a dangerous thing to do it's a preacher thing to do this is the key but if you were to narrow down the purposes of everything on the planet um, I'm going to try and narrow it down and that is to bring glory to God the purpose of everything is to bring glory to God. The stars, the heavens, the nature. Uh, I'm, I'm doing this talk out in our garden, seeing Josephine do gardening and seeing all the nature. The, all, all of this is to bring glory to God. Everything that you do, every, every place you set your foot is to bring glory to God. And so I just wanna mention three things that I think are really important things for us to highlight, focus on, in this season and the first thing um, is that uh, wherever you are you're called to bring glory to God I don't know what you do um, whether you find yourself um, whether you're a, a single mum and you're at home and uh, or whether you're out at work doing spreadsheets or whether you are um, building a wall or gardening or whatever it is that you're doing um, you might even be out of work and longing to be in work wherever you are your chief aim if you're a believer is to bring glory to God to glorify God and I don't know that we fully appreciate that whatever it is that you are doing right now what is your ordinary everyday life are you doing it with the express aim to bring glory to God, to glorify his name? 
how do you do that well I guess you work diligently you um, you embrace his creativity to do the job that you've uh, been asked to do well you talk about God with every opportunity that you get um, you make it clear to those around you that your life is about something much bigger than what you can touch see taste and feel your life is about bringing glory to almighty God and uh, that can be in small mundane ordinary things or in big explicit demonstrations of the uh, the brilliance and the power and the uh, healing presence of God either way we're here to bring glory to God the second thing uh, that I want to draw attention to is uh, to make disciples we um, if you've been a Christian for some time you will be in no doubt that one of the uh, core activities that Jesus left as an instruction to his followers is to go and make disciples most people could quote that uh, passage in Matthew where he said all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me therefore go and make disciples of all of all people baptizing them in the name of the Father Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you uh, most of us know that well if we've been a Christian for some time we know that well and we know it's our chief aim but if we were to ask the question who am, am I making into a disciple if I was to ask you now give me some names give me some names of people that at this moment in time you are making into a disciple suddenly it becomes more uncomfortable those those seeds uh, that are in the uh, dandelions plant we want to see those seeds go and germinate and grow and produce more seeds that's what it's all about that's what we're here for yes to bring glory to God that's the chief hate aim but making disciples is an act of bringing glory to God but I have to say in our in our normal life where we can gather as a church in uh, large gatherings uh, yes discipleship's happening we're, we're hearing the word of God and, and I'm for that and, and, and I appreciate um, those things and love those things and long for the day when we can meet again so I'm not suggesting that we stop doing that I'm suggesting that we use this scattered time to recalibrate our priorities we, are, we, we have to face the truth we have to face the facts that we busy ourselves with lots of things and for whatever reason m many of us are not making disciples and that's a challenge to me and it's a challenge to you and I, I just want to encourage you to use this time to ask yourself who, who who is God putting my way that I can speak to about Jesus I think I think we've got to ask ourselves some questions as a church uh, part of my job as a leader is to equip the church to do that so do you feel equipped do you feel ready do you know how to answer the awkward questions that get asked well l let us know what equipping you need to be able to uh, stand up in this in in a world that we live in and speak the gospel the good news of Jesus do you know how to communicate the gospel to people in a way that they will understand uh, the truth is in our world right now people are asking lots of questions are we there to provide the answers uh, that the gospel does provide I just want to I know that's a bit of a challenge but I want us to think about that I want us to start a dialogue on how can we structure church around this great commission of making disciples how do we prepare ourselves how do we work together how do we work 
just like Jesus sent out the 12 or the 72 in pairs, how do we work in teams of two to go to people of peace, places of peace, and preach the gospel? Uh, on the back of that, how do we plant more churches? All of those things have to be centered around that commission to go and make disciples, baptizing people, teaching them to obey everything that he has commanded us. It's a process in someone's life. Are we, do we have the time and the availability and the flexibility and the drive to give ourselves to this great commission? And the third thing, um, that I think is worth us thinking about when we look at this picture of these seeds being blown out and, and us as a church being scattered um, to bring glory to God. The third thing that I think is really significant for us to think about is the area of healing. Uh, I've recently started treatment for a 20 year long back condition um, and the truth is I've had to process the, the the facts of the matters of the matter that God hasn't healed me and 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 that has cost me that has been difficult uh, and um, and that 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 sometimes can be a barrier to pressing into planting that seed of healing in people's lives I feel really stirred by God I know some time ago in our church Bill Blow gave a word about God stirring this thing up I feel stirred again to to lay hold of this thing and to bring glory to God by um, pressing into the whole area of seeing people healed. Jesus was forever moved with compassion and someone got healed. Uh, sometimes it seems his compassion swayed him off course. His day was planned in a certain direction. He was heading this way and because of compassion, he went another way and saw somebody healed and a miraculous thing happened. I want to, I want to ask us to pray into it, even to fast and to see how can we, the Church of Jesus Christ, get leaner and stronger in our pursuit of the glory of God. And, and so those three things I wanted you to think about as we are a church that are at this moment in time unable to gather in our large ball somehow or other coronavirus has blown us um, into all sorts of different settings how do we make the most of this time how do we use our ordinary to bring glory to God